Okay, today's video is going to be about colour detection. It's a common process we're quite often trying to do in robotics. Um, like for this track here, there's signals that tell the robot which way to turn. And there's also a red patch at the end that you're supposed to put the rescued person into. So colour detection is quite difficult to do well. There's a lot of problems involved. And we're going to have a look quickly now at a few of the problems that can come up. So first of all, we're going to go to have a look at what the sensors are putting out. So we can go to port view, sensor. At the moment, it's reading reflected color, i.e. how dark or light shades. The sensors are actually quite good at reading shades, but poor at reading colors. If we press the center button, and scroll down, we can put it into, select that one, we can put it in color mode. And it gives us a different number for different colors. When the sensor number one is over white, it's giving us color six. We put that sensor over the green, it gives us color two. And put that sensor across over the black, it also gives us color two, which is quite problematic. Putting back over to white, gives us color six. Putting across over to red, we get color five. So we already have a problem that it's giving us the same color, whether it's on green or black. So now let's go across and also look at what the other color sensor is saying. Turn them into color mode. He gives us, so that's this sensor here, he gives us um, six over to white. When he's over to green, he's actually flicking between three and six. Right, so he's getting inconsistent readings and he's actually giving a different reading to the other color sensor. When we go over black, he gives us one reading number one which is also different to the others and when we get over red he gives us five so you can already see we're getting different readings from the different color sensors and we're also having the trouble that even when it's on the one color it flicks between readings on the right hand sensor and when we're on the left hand sensor it gives us the same reading even when it's on two colors now I have another color sensor just on the end here free running and he's plugged into port 2 Come back to port 2, put him in colour mode. And what happens is, when I put him over the green, hold him up over the green there, he gives colour 2. And as I just lift him up a little bit, he gives colour 3. I put him down a little bit, colour 2, colour 3, colour 2, colour 3. So as soon as it changes height at all, it can actually also cause it to change reading. And this is quite problematic when a robot's driving along and it's vibrating and the sensors are moving around a little bit while you're in motion, it can change the readings you're getting. So now we're going to have a look at how we can start getting around these problems. Okay, the first thing is to understand how the color sensor works. The color sensor on the left there is set in reflected light intensity and the color sensor on the right there is set in color mode. Now in reflected light intensity it just simply sends out one beam of light and measures how much of that light's been reflected back to know the gauge. When we're in color mode, instead of sending out one beam of light, it actually sends out three beams of light. It sends out a red one, then it sends out a blue one, then it sends out a green one, and it detects how much of each one of those have been sent back. And you can see those circles there, the red circle, the green circle, and the blue circle. So it doesn't read color, it reads how much of each of those three colors are sent back. And depending how much of those, each of those three colors are sent back, it does a calculation and tries to work out what the actual color is. Okay, if we want more accurate color detection, we actually need to read the raw RGB data from the sensor and process it ourselves in order to get better detection. Now, the standard EV3 language doesn't come with a block to read raw RGB data. There is one available from David Gilday's site that he wrote as a part of his Rubik's Cube Solving Robot and you can download it from there if you want to use EV3 language. What we're going to do is we're going to step up to a little bit more advanced language which will actually make it easier for all our mass and our variable handling than the EV3. The language I'm using is Microsoft Small Basic. It's a cut down Kitty's learner version of BASIC written by Microsoft and is available free to download from the Microsoft Download Center. I then need to add 
the EV3 BASIC extension pack written by Copper Dragon to allow small BASIC to be able to access the EV3. I have all, I have all that and I won't go through that in the video. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run all my programs while still having the EV3 connected to my computer. That way when I want to display stuff, I don't have to try to display it on this tiny little screen. I can display it on my own screen on my computer. So let's have a look at this first little program I have here. And basically the first couple of lines, when the camera will focus a little bit better. First couple of lines, I'm just setting up the sensor for what I want. Sensor dot set mode. And we're gonna go port one in mode four. So the EV3 language only has three modes, reflected light, ambient light, and color. This one here has a fourth mode called read raw RGB data. And that's the mode we're gonna set it up in. The second sensor we're gonna set up that's in port four, also in raw RGB data. And then I'm gonna have a loop running round and round and round. I'm gonna have an array variable read the sensor dot read raw value from port one and return three values. Now, what happens is that most of you guys are familiar with variables that store numbers. And normally if you want three numbers, the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue, you may have made three variables. I'm gonna have a variable that can store more than one number. It's gonna store three numbers in it. All right, so this is gonna return three numbers. And then we're gonna make another variable called sensor four, and it's gonna be equal to the sensor read raw value from port four and also three numbers. Then I'm just gonna have open a text window, write the line with the sensor one value plus a couple of spaces and then the sensor four value. Then I just have a program delay of a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. And if I don't have a delay, the program will still work just the information will go across the computer screen so fast, I will never be able to see it. So I'm sitting here, I'm gonna play this. And what you'll see is it starts printing out the raw data. So the first variable that comes across is 316, then 264, then 250, and there's a couple of spaces, 278, 330, 154. So that's the raw data that's coming from both of those sensors. Now, although both sensors are sitting over the white, you'll notice I'm actually getting different data from each sensor. That's because the calibration is a little bit different in each sensor, but they are sort of similar. And then what happens is if I now put both of the sensors over the black like that, yep, get them nicely over the back, you will find, get them nicely over the back, the data I'm getting now is quite low numbers because it's over the black and the black does not reflect much light. And what happens if I come here and I put it over the green, what you'll find when you look here, it's RGB. So there's not much red reflected. There's a lot of green reflected the middle number, then very little blue reflected, and you'll find it's similar in both of them. And when I come over here, and I put it on red, you'll notice the same thing now. The, uh, the red is the first variable. Both of them have quite large numbers in the first one and quite small numbers in the second one. You'll also notice if I turn this around here where there's the silver strip and I put him over the silver strip like that, when I look at here, I get incredibly large numbers on both of them because the silver strip is very reflected. So now I can see the raw data that comes from my sensors. Okay, now let's look at some code for actually detecting color. We're gonna use the in-range method. So basically we're just gonna read the raw RGB data from the sensor, and we're gonna see if it's within a certain range, we're gonna say it's a certain color. I've set up these variables here to say what my minimum max is. So my red min um, is gonna have three values stored to it, and my red max is also gonna have three values stored to it. So it's gonna store my red, my green, my blue. My red, my green, my blue. So that's the minimum red I want, the minimum green I want, the minimum blue I want. That's the maximum red I want, the maximum green I want, the maximum blue I want. If the raw data is within that range, I'm gonna say it's red. I've done the same for white, for green, for black, and for silver set up my ranges. 
right? then I have my main loop, all it does is it reads the data, checks to see if the data is within that range. If so, it stores what color, what range it was in. And then at the very bottom, it writes that to the screen for us, waits a second and then loops around. All right, so the first two lines up here, oh, my cursor's gone, just is reading the raw data. So the variable sensor one will be stored the three bits of information from sensor one. Sensor four will store the three bits of information from port four. Then here we're gonna test, we're gonna say, if the sensor one value is within range of the red, then the variable, the text variable, sensor one underscore color, will hold the text red. If that's not true, then we'll test to see if, if it's within range of white. If it is, then this text variable will hold the word, word white. If it's not true, then it will test this one. If that one's not true, then it tests the next one. If that one's not true, it will test that one. If that one's not true, then we just say color sensor one equals color is unknown. And we do the same down here for port four. Now how we do it is we just simply say the very first value stored in sensor one, which is always zero, is larger than the very first value of red min. And the very first value of one is smaller than the very first value of red max. And the next value is smaller than the next value of red min. And the next value, sorry, that should be larger than, is smaller than red max. And the final value of sensor thing is larger than red min and smaller than red max. We say, then, color sensor, one is equal to red. So you can see we're just checking that it's larger than the min, smaller than the max. The, that the red is larger than the red min, smaller than the red max. Larger than the uh, green is larger than the minimum green and smaller than the maximum green. We just go down there. All right, so let's play him and see how he goes. Press play up there. Straight away, it's saying white, white, white. Every second, when we look at the robot, it's sitting over white. If I'm moving forward over to the black, look back to the screen, it goes black, black, black. You'll notice there's a little bit of an unknown. The unknown would have been when we're a little bit halfway between two colors. When we get halfway between two colors, it can, it's still on white at the moment. We push him on a little bit more. You can very easily end up in an unknown because you're a little bit on half on half. Right, if we put him onto the red, we had a couple of unknowns then when I picked the robot up, it couldn't detect what was it happening. And now it's saying red, red, red. If I push him back without picking him up, I just get a green, green, green. If I pick him up and turn him around and put him down on half on half, you'll find you get a couple of unknowns when I picked him up. And after I put him down, one's on red, one's on green. I come around here to the silver bit and put him over here on the silver bit. He's down, let me just put that out from underneath the wheels and he's sitting on the silver. He's now saying silver, silver, silver. There was a few unknowns when I was picking him up. So you can see now we can detect all the different colors we want by seeing if the raw RGB data is within our range. I tried to choose a range that was wide enough that both sensors could fit into it. If your sensor's calibrations is too far apart, you might have to have a different range for different sensors. Now, obviously we don't wanna type out all this code every time we wanna use color detection. So what we do is we save all this code in what we call a subroutine, which is much the same as a MyBlocks in the EV3 language. Once it's in a subroutine, we can call it from whenever, wherever we want whenever we want color detection.